Yeah, I could film your behind the scenes video. Yeah, behind the scenes. <laughs> So explain what's happening here, Simon. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is uh, this is setting the camera up once, realizing that uh, the battery has just died, paddling back, leaving the camera dangling precariously <laughs> from, a from a dead branch. <laughs> <laughs> Looks about ready to Whilst fall off. <laughs> standing up in the canoe and trying not to fall out of it. <laughs> Finding, because I'm very OCD, battery number two, so I don't get out of sequence. <laughs> see, this is this is the stuff that you don't see about creating a YouTube video. My batteries don't need numbers; they're all different. So, <laughs> <laughs> just the white one. <laughs> right, let's try that again. Take two. Take. I'm sure it looked lovely. Right, hello. As you can see, we've just had a bit of a, uh, a paddle in in uh, Simon's canoe. There he is, the man himself, Simon, bloke in the woods. <laughs> this is Simon's Island. Um, it's unnamed. He's not it named it. Name. So uh, by the end of the night, we're going to try and think of a name for this place. Um, but as you saw, we've just put in by the river here. And uh, I'll show you the island. I've only just uh, had a quick look myself. It's uh, quite open, trees around the outside to kind of hide you, I guess. Not in the middle of nowhere, but it's far enough from uh, civilization. I'm just walking over to the uh, other side of it now, just to show you kind of the sort of size of the island we've got here. It's plenty big enough. We're probably set up over by the river, back where we put in, put up a tarp or something. Uh, getting lost. <laughs> so it's not a huge island but it's uh, certainly big enough for the two of us. Simon spends the night here quite a lot. Just a little bit of bushwhacking it being uh, autumn now. It's not so overgrown and the rivers were a lot nicer than the last time I was here to paddle in a lot deeper. Where am I? Oh, I can see it now. So yeah, just making way to the other side of the river here. Oh. Right. And here we are. So yeah, it's a good size really. A few trees on there. And uh, on the way in we uh, passed a downed tree that's been uh, chopped up so we're gonna paddle back to that. I think he, Simon said it's probably been down a couple of years so we're gonna get back to that and take some of that for firewood. There is some here and Simon stashed some here but uh, yeah we'll get some more bigger logs. I think it's ash as well which is quite nice and uh, that'll do for our fire. So yeah we're gonna get unloaded and uh, <coughs> go get some firewood. Uh, the river dug, 
that flows into it very close to here, so we went and had a little explorer. Well, there we are. Just come to get some logs and I'm falling over. <laughs> As you can see, there's plenty here. And we're, I don't know, just a few minutes paddle from the island. Right, I better get to work and not let Simon do it all. <laughs> Here we go, fully loaded, ready to go. Oh, it's lucky I weren't filming. <laughs> well, now I've got to get in. <laughs> I'll turn it off for that. <laughs> this is the life. <laughs> and everything. <laughs> That's what happened to it. Yeah, you left it here. You've been floating down the waves since you were last here. <laughs> <laughs> I left my beard in Norfolk. <laughs> Got a lot of these old roots, which look like my old beard, <laughs> uh, come with these logs. They're all piled up with it, so we'll use them to help get a fire going as well. What you got? A couple of poles. With some V's at the top, oh. notches at the top to hold the canoe up. I'm going to use the canoe as the the back wall of a sort of tarp shelter just to give it a bit of height at the back. Yeah, we'll have to think about exactly where it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, yeah, lean the canoe up against it and the gunnel of the canoe sits in that crook there. Oh, yes, yes. And that sort of holds. You've holds done this it up before. On its side. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, the person who was selling it had no idea what it was. And they said uh, they had two. He had two of them. The first one sold in seconds, and uh, he didn't know whether it was supposed to have a pole or. Oh, I was going to say, did someone die in it, and they were selling the estate oh, off? No. <laughs> Body up at the same <laughs> Terra Nova bivy bag, only used once. <laughs> right, so we're just about uh, finishing setting up here on the island. Um, you've seen me use the hex pig plenty before. Usually I use the um, rectangular ground sheet because uh, I don't really use the inner. 
don't see the point in carrying it most of the time unless I'm somewhere that's very buggy. The uh, problem with a rectangular ground sheet is the corners will sometimes flop or unfold outside of the tent and they'll redirect all that rainwater inside and they'll just soak everything. Um, so I got the uh, specialist ground sheet for this, or footprint or bathtub, whatever you want to call it. And that just um, clips on to all your points. It's exactly the same as the actual inner does. Um, yeah, I've used it once already on uh, camp a couple of weeks ago that I didn't film when I did the catapult video. Um, but yeah, this is pretty lightweight. I don't know exactly what it is. I suppose I'll put it on the screen. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it, um, it's all strung in. You just tighten it up. Um, you know it's all underneath the, uh, the fly. So you're definitely not gonna get um, the rain kind of coming. Um, it's pretty thin if you're on rough ground like this. It seems to be doing okay though. Yeah, if I was somewhere very stony, I might uh, take something thicker or put something underneath the firmarest, but I'm liking it so far. All right, that's me done. All set up in the hex peak, nice and simple. And uh, this is Simon's elaborate bushcraft setup. <laughs> <laughs> he's a uh, canoe as the back tarp over the top and he's um, Terranova bivy bag only been used and died in once <laughs> <laughs> and we are right by the river here so we'll just grab a fire down here I've just brought my Dutch oven for a nice stew Simon's on the fire duty and I'm on food prep duty. This is going to be our stew in the Dutch oven tonight. I'm going to get on with that. You don't mind skin on potatoes, do you? Lovely. <laughs> Better than bloody peeling the things. Yeah. <laughs> Right, just a little tip if you're using cast iron. I tend to keep just a few bits of rice in mine, just dry rice and some uh, paper towel. And uh, that just helps keep it dry and make sure you don't get any rust or anything. It is properly seasoned, but it's just a good way to keep it. I keep this in my shed at home, so it's probably a bit damp than it would be in the house. Um, just a good way of storing it. It's, it's, impregnated it's wax stuff. impregnated cardboard, yeah. I've seen the really thin papery yeah, ones. That, yeah, this is kind of, you like get, they come in packs thing, like this, and you get, I don't know, half a dozen sheets or whatever in there. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, they're really good. You just, oh, I'll show you on the, I'll, I'll do a little thing. And we've got my old beard for, yeah. uh, <laughs> 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 for some flash tinder. <laughs> so we're gonna be using that. And um, Andy very kindly shaved off a bit of his beard. So we're going to um, we're going to use a bit of that as well, just to get it going, and then straight in with our with our um, kindling. Right, let's give it a go. And just because it isn't getting used enough, I bought my XL ferro rod, just because this thing is the beast. Nice and quick. Nice and quick. It works as well as birch bark, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a similar sort of thing, really, I guess. Yeah. It? Scrape it and. Scrape it and. Just scrape and go. Scrape, just scrape and go. <laughs> Let's see how right, well the beard does. Let's try Andy's beard. Yeah, 
coming. I just killed it. No, 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 Some of this wood is rather damp. <laughs> yeah, it is, all, it is all pretty damp. As you'll have seen earlier, we, we had a bit of a scavenge on the island and uh, decided to go out in the canoe and get some more. I knew there was a, a tree that was uh, across the river a couple of years ago, which uh, I guess the environment agency had cut up and, um, and logged and just left the pile of logs there. And they were still there. They've been there for two years, so they're nicely seasoned. Um, so we went and grabbed a load and um, yeah, just so we're not using all the all the wood that's here on the island. We've got a bit of that as well. And it's nice and dry. So. I reckon we have some of this over as well. It? Yeah, definitely. We don't use, we just right, we can stay here and it'll be here for next time. Fire! Da, da, da. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> My wonky legs wonked the wrong way. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, Simon's been kind enough to buy me a. It's in Christmas paper, but I'm going to call it a late birthday present. Late birthday present, early Christmas present. <laughs> <laughs> and all I got him was a beer. Yeah, but it's a very nice beer. Whitstable Bay. Had to hey, be a Kent L. one. Hey? <laughs> Had to be a Kent one. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Very nice. Very nice. Cheers. It definitely looks camping related. <laughs> oh, it's not a... Is it a bivvy? Is it a hunker? It is a oh, hunker. Oh man, thank you. <laughs> well you said on I've your... I've been uh, on and off and on and off with these yeah. for so long. I keep stopping myself and no, I don't buy one. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That is alright. There's a story behind it. I, I bought that and um, I bought that a bit spontaneously. Um, and it wasn't really the bivvy that I was after and, and I sort of thought. And then when you said um, on your live, live feed that you've been after it or you were thinking about yeah. getting a hunker. on and off for ages. I was like, oh, I've got one! <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, I'm you. wrapping that up. <laughs> thank you That's very much. That's the XL one as well, Seth. So, oh, uh, nice. Yeah. I fit my pack in it too. You can get, yeah, get everything in it. Well, we've got the Dutch oven on for dinner, just heating it up before I put any oil in or anything and uh, realised we didn't bring a, um, <laughs> a wooden spoon or anything. So Simon's going to knock us one up, <laughs> it ain't a gonna spatula be, it of ain't, some sort. It ain't going to be pretty. Gonna well, while the stew's on, we can maybe do something, a serving spoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got the smoke. We've got camp set up, so the smoke's all going out to the river, which is not where we're camping or sat, but I'm sat here right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to move. <laughs> All right, so a Dutch oven is up to temperature. We'll uh, stick in some oil. A bit more. Yeah. Not sure why that's not sitting flat. Should do. Sick. <laughs> but we're having stewed hand there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the meat is beef, and I um, dusted it in uh, flour before freezing it last night. Mm. And that will thicken our stew.
Yep, so that's hot enough. It's, it's fizzing. That's definitely a, definitely a sizzle. Yeah. Sizzle, that's a better word than fizz. I don't know. Fizz, fizz sounds good. <laughs> and with Simon's spatula. <laughs> Get that all on the heat and uh, leave it a moment. I can smell that already. Beefy. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, Andy? What are you doing? Right, so the meat's browned off. Just going to add in some of that veg now. Potatoes, carrots and some onions. And use our special spatula. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to smell it now. Let the heat and the oil get on that before putting in some liquid. I'm adding the secret ingredient, oxtail soup. This is just like Mama makes. And uh, that will not only thicken a little bit, but um, it's kind of instead of a stock. Well, it is a stock, I suppose, so to speak. Put one and a half in, that should probably be okay. And I've uh, warmed up some water, so I'm not putting cold water in the Dutch oven. Probably need to add a little more, but it's a good start. Give that a mix. And then we're good to leave this for a while. It's looking good. Get the lid on and forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> right, so while the uh, stew cooks away, I thought I'd show you something I've been sent by Olight again. Olight have been really good to the uh, kind of camping bushcraft community, sending these out for reviews and just kind of catering to us, I guess. Um, so if I get this one out, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm tangled up with the charger. This is the S2R Baton. Um, I'll bring you in for a closer look. All right, so here it is. It's the S2R Baton 2. So this is an update to the uh, original S2R Baton. They've updated it like they did with the S1R. Um, they've made it a bit smaller. A bit brighter and the um, the power switch there will give you a uh, reading for the battery as well which is pretty cool. Uh, uses that same magnetic charger system so if you've got one of the Olight system you have to take the one sort of charger out so I can use that with my head torch or or my warrior torch if I'm doing some kind of exploring type stuff. Uh, it's 1150 lumens so it is plenty bright enough what you do around camp. For me this is replacing my uh, emergency torch I call it which I keep with me on camps which is a backup for if like a head headlamp dies so this is always in my pack in uh, my little dry bag with all my other electrics and stuff. Um, yeah it, it's a brilliant little multi-purpose torch. It's small enough for some that it would be an EDC torch uh, it's bright enough to do pretty much anything really other than kind of your search and rescue kind of type things. Um, it hasn't got any kind of knurling on the top there or anything so you're uh, it's not going to tear your pockets up or anything. Yeah the handle's got the kind of knurling on there. Um, I'll go through some of the functions here if I turn it on I'll get it onto the lowest. So that's your low, your medium, your high, you can double press for your turbo and you've got your 
triple press for your for your strobing. Um, if you press and hold with it off, you'll get your glow mode for your map reading and things. I mean, most of the time you're just going to use it on the on the lower medium setting. Really, it's very rare you need to to use it on the higher settings or the turbo even. But it's a like with audio light stuff. It's a very nice bit of kit. Got your double way belt clip there as well. So I'm going to have a little wander around the island with it now and uh, see how it see how it fares. I've locked my exposure on the camera now, so I'm just going to give a little play with it and uh, see how it looks. We've got a tree. Oh, I don't know, 10 meters in front of us, something like that. I'm going to try it on the low setting first. And we'll check that up to the medium, which I'm pretty sure you can see. That's going to be perfectly usable for most situations. And go up to high. It's quite a focused beam. And if I double tap, there is your turbo, which you can see is pretty bright. <laughs> um, I'm probably going to be able to see a lot more than what you can on the camera here, but uh, I can see the other side of the island quite easily. And I'll just show the strobe as well. Which I'm guessing is turbo, but strobed. Yeah, that's a pretty good bit of kit. That's uh, going to replace my um, crappy Chinese cheapy torch in my kit. <laughs> and uh, having the same charger as the headlamp, it's going to be very handy for me indeed. Right, Simon's finished our serving spoon. It's actually looking pretty good. I've actually, yeah, it's, well... Attempt number two. This is attempt number two. <laughs> number two, the first one... Well, the first one, there were all sorts of problems with it, as you can see. We've got the teaspoon. <laughs> um, or strainer. For a start, the, the end broke off because uh, I went too thin. And then I split it. Um, and then I went right the way through the bottom. So that was, well, that's for the fire. So this is number two. It's yeah, a little bit bigger. It needs a little bit of um It's quite refining. nice and deep as well. That's good for a Oops. serving spoon, isn't it? Good for a serving spoon, hopefully. Do you need a spoon to stir it with? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm going to add in, I've got a little baggie of um, pearl barley and uh, I think peas, dried peas. So we'll get that in there for the last kind of half hour or so. Nice. Let's see how the spoon works. Oh, she's a beauty. <laughs> Like the Ferrari of spoons. Ferrari. <laughs> Land Rover. <laughs> yeah. Leaks, yeah, no, no doors good. shut. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally starts. Well, at least yours starts. Oh, well, mine does start, it just stops. <laughs> right, there we go. I feel like a film star talking to two cameras. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make up the dumplings for the stew here. I've got a mix of uh, self-raising flour with half the amount of suet fat in there as well. And I've just added in some um, mixed herbs. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of water in the bag. Seal it back up. And we'll just mix it in. So we've got our kind of doughy mixture for our nice dumplings. So it's a, a good fat source to, to take camping because uh, you don't need a watertight container or anything like with oil. I've cooked with it and stuff before, it's, it's good. I don't think the Americans have much in the way of suet. I think it's a very British thing. It's, um, I think it's kidney fat. I think it's taken Is off it? the... Yeah, yeah. It's only off the kidneys. Oh. Uh, there's some reason for that. All right, how are we doing? Yeah, I think we've uh, come together enough. Uh, Bushcraft glove. <laughs> so the uh, 
pearl barley and peas have been going away for a little while, so they should be done by the time this is finished. There we go. Damn, it looks good. That's smelling good, isn't it? Mm. And now I'm going to get messy. They don't have to be neat. Just little dollops. Probably got enough for a family of four or five here. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. I've got enough for another one in here. And this is why you always take wet wipes camping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot beat a wet wipe. Yeah, I think that's probably going to do. I don't think I'm going to get the rest out of there. <laughs> Let me just put our lid back on. And 15 minutes or so, we are golden. Right, I think we're ready to roll. Here we go. Drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, um, oh, I can't remember what they call it now, the stage thing, the dustbins and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so our dumplings hey. appear to be pretty well done, yeah. Right. Yes. Plate time. dumplings there. Lovely, that looks good. Get you some Ooh. meat and potatoes. Look at that. That's fantastic. Thank you mate. Enough to get on with? Oh yes. This is winter food, isn't it? That is proper winter food. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Nothing like a chilli or a stew or something for yeah. winter camping. That is properly thickened up, isn't it? Oh, stick the lid back on. Oh, and the spoon is serving well. Hey. <laughs> stick the lid on and we have seconds. There we go. Stew and dumplings. Cheers. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> do that again. Fucking <laughs> hell. I'll, I'll say it when your mouth's not full. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, buddy. is amazing. You've got some cast iron with you. I bought a bit of cast. That um, that skillet is is really 
brilliant this thing i think i think this cost me about three quid or four quid or something out of aldi nice when they do their special deals um i think it was like mexican week or something rather and it was not <laughs> sold as a fajita uh, sizzler skillet oh. and uh, yeah it's sort of just small enough really you know you can i don't mind carrying the weight of that you know on a on a trip i'll take it with me even if i'm going on a hiking trip sometimes not too bad Sausage, black pudding, white pudding. So we've got black pudding, we've got white pudding, which is a Scottish sort of pork and oats and whatnot, I guess. And um, English pork sausages. And then there's going to be bacon. Streaky bacon. Which I'll put in in a minute. Streaky bacon and uh, mushrooms. And vegetables too. But mushrooms. You you all right with mushrooms? Yeah, I love mushrooms. Get them in a, as well now, so take off some of the flavour. Put down nicely. Yeah, just, the, for, for just a, a, a bit of colour, that's all, yeah. <laughs> did you count out for what exact what I think? I did. <laughs> they haven't got sharpie numbers on them. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my, my OCD kicking in again, I'm afraid. I've got some eggs in my uh, egg carrier. You'll have seen this before if you watched my um, steak and bannock, was it? Bannock and eggs video I did in the woods a while ago. Um, a subscriber very kindly sent this to me. He made it himself, it's 3D printed. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd bring this out and give it another, give it another whirl. Well, the eggs all survived the journey, so um, all good. I haven't actually done a spoon in a while. Get the excuses in early. <laughs> Right, so we've just been sat around the campfire doing a little carving. Uh, Simon's finished off his 
wooden spoon, long handled one from last night, which has come out rather nice. And uh, I decided to turn my spoon into a scoop, which really should have more of a, a bent handle, but that's all right. It's something to do, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, nearly all packed up now. Well, I am. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's a good thing to know uh, there's no hike back. There's just a nice little paddle. So there's still something to look forward to and not kind of dread. <laughs> Which is a, a nice change. So yeah, it's just been a good one on the island here. Let's do a little bit of carving at least this morning. Something bushcrafty. <laughs> Seeing as you've done all the bushcraft. <laughs> I was just chef last night. All right. Good chef you were too, that's you was amazing. Thank you very much. As was breakfast. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Load them up the slide of me, can't we? That's us on our way, on our quick paddle back now. Uh, it's just a, a short relaxing one, which is nice. No trying to make miles or anything. But it's relaxing when you're just filming and letting Simon paddle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks I Simon. Up and do my one, just one Cornetto again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That's only, you have to watch his video for that one. <laughs> but yeah, cheers for having us up again. No, a pleasure, it's been, been good to see you again. It's been good to, yeah, have proper chat around the campfire this time. and. Yeah not be suffering from hay fever. <laughs> um, yeah, and I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Bit of a chilled one. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll uh, see you on the next one. Goodbye for now. <laughs> <laughs>